it's recording now. <laughs> so, um, this is Derek Lugo. He uh, threw hiked the Appalachian Trail in 2012 and has written the, uh, this fantastic book called The Unlikely Through Hiker, An Appalachian Trail Journey, which I recommend you read. <laughs> and uh, this is a testament, actually, to the character in the book, who is, I call him Matt Burla, just got used to that. <laughs> but uh, he also threw hiked the Appalachian Trail in 2012, and he is a triple crowner. <laughs> So, Which he's shy about, but yes, <laughs> he is. I've noticed that. <laughs> um, so, uh, Derek, how did you get your uh, your trail name? Uh, it's not obvious. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. This is you. <laughs> I mean, literally, they said the same thing when I met them at the conservancy. I'm like, how did he get the name, Mister Fabulous? And they were just kind of like, just. Because he's fabulous. <laughs> That's just All right, let's leave it. Next question? No. <laughs> um, so long story short, before um, when I before I threw a hike, I didn't know anything about hiking. I never camped out, never fished a tent. Didn't even know if I liked hiking. All I knew was the Appalachian Trail was a trail from Georgia to me. And when I stepped into it, I, I was telling people, and I was actually doing it, where I was going to stream, shaving. I would joke around with my friend here in New York saying, you know, I'm going to be the prettiest person on the trail. I'm going to make sure I stay groomed. My dreads are twisted. I wish I had a full-length mirror I could put, I could fold and put in my, back, in my backpack. You know, things like that. And my, one of the hikers, Overdrive, uh, said, you know what? You're a Mr. Fabulous. And I said, what? Well, there's no way I'm going to go around calling myself Mr. Fabulous. You know, like, how does that sound? Either. I'm just a fabulous thing, right? That sounds creepy. And he was like, yeah, just thinking like that, it's creepy. So he's like, just try and use it for a few days and uh, see see if it sticks. So there's a story that goes with this that, because I felt very uncomfortable using that name. But one day, it was like a week using the name, and one day I was hiking by myself, and there was a group of day hikers. They were like elderly hikers. And they were going southbound, I was going north. And I stepped aside, and they were, like, asking me questions, wishing me luck. And the last woman, she must have been, like, 200 years old. She was older than me, 18. Like, she, she had a cane. She had an aide helping her. And she was small, really cute old lady. And she came up to me, and she said, uh, what's your trail name, son? And, and I go, ma'am, it's, it's Mr. Fabulous. And without missing a beat, she goes, Oh my, I've been waiting for Mr. Fabulous my entire life. <laughs> and she grabbed my face, gave me a kiss, and like kind of started skipping away with like her cane. And <laughs> chasing after her, and I was like, you know what? That's it, I'm keeping it. Because it was more than just the name. Every time I shared it with someone, people would want to hear the story. They would laugh, they would smile. And it became my journey, not just Mr. Fabulous, the name. It's the journey I had during that time, and even to this day. Wow, that's a fantastic story. <laughs> and you are fabulous. Yes. <laughs> it's better than my story. I mean, mine's literally, I had a horrible time at the approach trail. And um, I made it to the shelter finally. You know, I, I barely made it up there. I was sweating. I, would, I asked God to lift my feet and, like, I almost fell over the mountain because I was that exhausted, <laughs> honestly. And I got to the shelter and I'm like, finally, relaxation and everything. And then I started feeling like I needed to vomit. I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit up and just kind of let gravity do its thing. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I was not thinking too clearly. But, and then I'm like, oh my God, I had to throw up. So I'm like crawling to the edge of the shelter. I'm like puking buckets. And just because God needed a laugh, I guess, I farted so loud, it sounded like a lion's roar. I mean, this one guy, John, he literally booked it. He thought it was a bear roaring. <laughs> that's how bad it was. And so, you know, that's how I ended up with lion farts. <laughs> well, you know, if you're starting your through hike over, you can, you can maybe change that. If maybe. You want. <laughs> I love sharing a story though. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's, a, it's a great story. You're not, and it's great that you're not, you're not embarrassed by it. Like, you know what? That's what you do when you're 
on the trail. I can't tell you how many hikers I was hiking behind, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, come on. Yeah, flatulence. <laughs> you know what happens? You could be sitting down and having lunch, and someone will go, burn. You're like, yeah. okay, that's what the hikers do. For some strange reason, it just decides to come out, and we're like, all right, cool. Exactly, you know, that's what happened to me. And sometimes it's every other step. Yeah, right? It's like a, it's like a band, you know? Like a... Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, I already asked that question to him earlier, so that's why I'm not asking him. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know anything about testing. <laughs> no. Just a guy named Impulse. I was reading the <laughs> Whatever New <I> Testament. Did. <laughs> did you ever meet Impulse? I, well, he, he's, he's in my book. Okay. Is he, did, I, did I not put him in the book? You know what? He was in the manuscript, uh, but I don't think okay. he made it into the published part. But yes, I did. Um, he ended up doing no. He was in it. He ended up doing the quad state challenge. Yeah, right, right. right. Well, he, he that yeah. That's he where I'm at. Uh, I'm putting my fingers up. Quotes. He great. he wasn't even trying. <laughs> and he wasn't prepared. <laughs> kind of set me back. I didn't get to you know do the record or anything like right, that. Right. I finished it, but didn't do it like under 24 hours. But I did meet that guy. And right, right. He, he was a character. He was a yeah. character. <laughs> he named me. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was reading the New Testament in the morning, and he just called me Testament, and it seemed to fit. It fits you, because yeah. you honestly like, and I to this day you're like a gentle soul. Like you just a good. I mean, just the way you speak, your smile, you just like a really nice dude. And Testament fits you perfectly because you could be like a biblical dude. Like I can totally see that. Like some people look at. You embody it. Like, that's who I see. And then I love sweet. that you're growing your beard again. Cause without Thanks. It, it's like, <laughs> I appreciate it. You're flattering me. Nothing to love, man. Nothing yeah. to love. Tons here, too. Yeah, and that's the thing um, about the, uh, the trail that I didn't expect was when you start, when I started, it was just me by myself. But within days, I had friends and throughout the entire trail i have friends all over the world you meet someone i say this all the time when you meet a stranger in real life you need kind of like that icebreaker what is it that you're going to talk about but on the trail we're doing the same thing we're through hiking so the icebreaker happened and we just start chatting you don't need to like there's no shyness you just start talking and within a day your friends two days your best friends and after that your family mm-hmm. so you know Testament, and, like, the guy showed up in one of my book release just surprised me. Like, we're family. That's it. We're just family. For the rest of our lives, whatever else we do with our lives, we're always going to be family. Yep. Yeah. And I remember I saw you at Harper's Ferry the day I got on. Um, and I was telling my family, you know, you were doing the Quad State Challenge or whatever, and you just ran in and out of the conservancy there. And... Um, I was, you came in, my mom said hi to you, and you said, I've got to get out of here, I'm, like, I'm in a hurry, and um, I was telling my mom, well, I don't need to make friends, I'm just going to see what, see what the trail is about, you know, and then you just, I met Overdrive, and, you know, Peaches, and met all these people, and just, it's such an experience. To... That, that day, it was funny, because I left... Harper's Ferry the same time Overdrive did. And we okay. haven't seen each other for a while. And mm-hmm. I'm sorry I didn't chat to your mom. I don't feel like I said... I, I felt like I chatted <laughs> with her for a minute. I mean, I, I don't recall ever telling someone I didn't have time. I mean, that was the one thing that I always wanted to do was that I was getting a lot of trail magic and I felt bad and I was like, how do I give back? Mm-hmm. And I, I was always willing to share my story because that's what people wanted they wanted to, to to hear my story and that was my my gift back to them so i'm i'm sorry I didn't, I didn't no i think you. i maybe i was being bashful and saying mom like you know, i don't i don't really remember you know i just remember seeing you in the dreadlocks and just knowing like you know i'll, I'll probably make friends but i don't you know we'll see what happens you know but you make yeah. friends so fast and they're oh yeah friends for so, life so fast if you're trying not to, 
like, me friends, don't throw like that way. That's not the place. You're not going to be secluded. I thought I was going to be by myself throughout the whole thing. I have being part of this hiking community is is a part of this the journey that we we both did or three of us did that i didn't expect you know and it's the biggest gift i got out of it mm-hmm. i could see yeah that. the places and stuff are cool but it's definitely those friendships and the memories and and yes it's definitely the people and and i my readers always say that the book was because you get 18 books that talk about terrains and and how hard it was and this and that but my book is it's about the people it's about obviously i talk about the mountains and this and that but you get a lot of the interaction because one of the things i learned right away and it's in the book that there was an older hiker called birdman and he said he asked the through hiker that hiked the year before uh what if he could do anything different how would he change it how would he change his through hike and he said i took pictures of like you know trees mountains grass dirt all this other stuff but i didn't take enough pictures of people and it hit me like that i said yes because you'll see a photo of a mountain it's beautiful but you don't capture that moment like what you felt but if you take a picture of someone you had a conversation with you'll remember the train trail name that conversation that moment something more than a scenery and from that moment on, I was taking pictures of everyone. And that's what my book ended up being, about just, not just my experience, but my encounter with people. Actually, um, my uh, when I was doing the approach trail, my mom was referencing a part in your book where uh, if you got, like, exhausted, you would stop and be like, wow, that's a nice tree. Let me take a picture of that tree. So she did that same thing when she got exhausted. She's like, that's a nice tree. Oh, yeah. that Rachel took a picture that of was, it. That was my excuse to stop. It was the first time I hiked. I didn't want anyone to think that I was like weak, you know? And as soon as I started those steps, I was like, what in the world did I get into? So I would stop. Oh, that's a, that waterfall is really nice. Let me admire that for a little bit. You know, trying to catch my breath. <laughs> for me there was a little bit of anxiety around how many breaks I was going to take and how, where I was going to eat and what you know uh, when I got on everyone had already done a thousand miles you know uh-huh. I was yeah. getting on at Harper's Ferry so that halfway point yeah I was meeting you and Noki and you know Sprinkles and Man Boy and you know it was most of you guys had already done a thousand miles you didn't have the whole um like gear checking kind of mentality that the early hikers have and stuff. And it was just like, no, if you want to do this, you can do it, you know. Uh, now, now, were you a hiker before? I can't remember. No, it was my first overnight backpacking it was, it was, trip. It was your first time, what? okay. Yeah. Um, oh. Did you, did you, how did you prepare then? Did you prepare at all? <laughs> Not much. I, I, you know, I was kind of in shape because I do manual labor, but, uh, no, I threw a bunch of stuff I had in an old duffel bag that could fold to have straps and stuff. It was it was a pretty horrendous sight, and I had uh, two big contractor bags instead of compactor bags, and I had all my food in one of them, and I had all my stuff I wanted to keep dry in a second one. And How heavy was your bag? Uh, around 55 60 pounds with water. <laughs> I, had, I had a it. slingshot with steel ball bearings. <laughs> I had uh, a trap. I had this little like metal trap, you know. I was, oh my goodness. The, did it lighten up after a while? Yeah. No? Oh, I, so the first week I learned about dry sacks. I learned about uh, dehydrated foods. I, I was carrying a can of spinach. And oh. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was going to be Popeye at the top of some mountain, <laughs> pouring, pouring spinach through a pipe, right? <laughs> Dude, I've told you this before. You should write a book. Seriously. <laughs> Your stories are amazing. I tell you this all the time. You're a triple crowner. And I, and I found out, I think years after you did it, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I just knew you from the AT. You know, you're my piece from the AT. But you have your your story. Your story is amazing, man. And, and I hope one day you can at least I don't know 
to share it somehow. Yeah. Well, You'll be my ghostwriter. Hey, man. Yeah, that's what we got to work on. When I, when I first met him at the uh, Conservancy, I was talking about, I don't know, something about Triple Crown or stuff, and uh, you were just like nodding along, you know, but like Sam, uh, Voice of Reason stepped in, and he's like, you know, he's a Triple Crown. I'm like, you are? Because he was just like so, you know, he didn't say anything. <laughs> I kind of get it. I had a, um, a close friend that every time we met someone, he would say, oh, he hiked the Appalachian Trail. And I was like, kind of like, every single time we met someone. And then once the book came out, he's like, or well, while I was writing, is he's writing about the Appalachian Trail. And then the book came out, he has a book. So <laughs> I, I kind of feel you. But being a triple crowner, that is that is amazing title to have. Most people don't know what it means. Right. So but if that's I go when you around go, self-promoting, I... yeah. <laughs> uh, that's when you inform them. But yeah, it, it's well, just... Well, if someone asks, then they want to know. Yes. You know, so if I wait for someone to probe a little bit, then it's someone that wants to hear it. You know, I'm yeah. not just talking. It's a... And then you can't. Then they can't shut you yeah, up. Yeah, then they can't shut you up. I thought that was a loaded question. Yeah, why'd you ask? <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite subject in the world almost, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, what was the most difficult part of the Appalachian Trail for you? Um, the most difficult part, I would say difficult, but still enjoyable was the lack of hygiene <laughs> what's that the lack of uh fashion choices no. <laughs> i didn't have enough bandanas right. i needed a bunch of colorful bandanas i didn't have enough well sorry i interrupted um no i think not knowing what i was doing and then struggling with my backpack because i, I didn't know how to wear my backpack so it was pulling on my shoulders, and I was hiking up Blood Mountain, and I was tasting blood in my mouth. It was mm. just like one of the worst experiences. And I kept thinking to myself that my, I, my it was a challenge for me. So I was going to finish it no matter what. And I was thinking to myself, if I have to hike the entire Appalachian Trail with a busted shoulder, I'm going to do it. I'm glad I didn't because I probably would have permanently messed up my shoulder. Eventually, at Neil's Gap, someone showed me what I was doing wrong. Um, but I would say, I would say the hardest thing was that, and I wasn't great climbing mountains, so it took me a while to climb up the mountains. So that was hard. Like, I would stop several times. Like, I didn't, I wasn't even sure how I was actually going to finish the entire trail. I just knew that I was going to do it, and it was going to take me a long time to do it. And eventually, I got my hiking legs, and it was fine. Um, that was maybe the hardest. Uh, there was some scary parts where I hiked in a snowstorm, thought I was going to, like, perish right there. Um, and there was one time where I ran out of, like, food, and I had to hike another extra seven miles in, with little water as well. So those were difficult moments that I didn't prepare or just decided to go a little bit further because it was early still during the day. So sometimes the difficulty for me anyways on the trail was my bad choices. Uh, when I did it, when I, um, when I night hiked, when I did the uh, quad state challenge, which is something I don't recommend people to do. Quad state challenge for people that don't know is we hike uh, three, three state, no, four states in less than 24 hours. Uh, and you're gonna end up hiking at night. And I started, my plan was to go to the uh, Virginia, West Virginia border, wait on the Virginia side, uh, and then leave around 11 at night. I don't know why, or 12 at night. I don't know why I felt like I needed to leave that time. But I wanted to sleep before that time. Uh, because hiker, you know, when you're through hiking, you go to bed early, and then you get up super early. But for some reason, I was too wired. I couldn't go to sleep. So I was already up, like, from 6 that morning, you know, and then trying to hike the rest of the way. So I was already, what, how many hours is that? Like 18 hours up, you know, so I added on to that. So by the end of it, I was walking like a zombie. So that was the hardest and most, the dumb, dumbest thing I've ever done. Jeez. 
That's insane. Yeah. Tell me about it. And I had five books in my backpack. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I remember guy. that in the book. Yeah, you did have books in there. Why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think... Um, in case you got a chance to read during the quad state challenge. Right? <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, actually, this would... goes... Oh, sorry. Sorry. What were you saying? No, 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 no. no, I was going to say, it made for... The really bad mistakes that I did, um, especially in the beginning, made for a good story for, like, what not to do, <laughs> you know? Um, people ask me, like, okay, you didn't have any experience, and I don't have any hiking experience. Do you think maybe, you know, I can just do it? I'm like, no, first of all, go hiking. Find out if you, you like hiking. Don't, don't just do what I did, you know? I lucked out where either way I was going to do it, even if I hated to the, the, the right, but I fell in love with it within a week, so it worked out. But yeah, learn learn first how to hike, or if you like hiking. I have the opposite reaction. I tell everyone to go for it. <laughs> 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 like, look, you know, Mr. Fabulous did it. I did it. It can be done. You just, you know. I mean, we're we're, we're you know, it, it depends on the person. Well, uh, we we were driven. And if you if you never quit, then you don't have to go home. Also, you gotta walk into it knowing what you're 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 you're, you're stepping into. There are people that accept... lose 150 pounds on trail or whatever. Yeah. You, know. you have to expect to be hiking in the rain, possibly in the snow, in the cold. You know, the, the terrain's gonna be horrible at times. If you accept all that and know that you're gonna end up pitching your tent in the rain, uh, you're gonna be drenched in your tent. Yeah, you're gonna fall. Maybe fall there's in there's the river. no OSHA to come save you. And then, yeah. you know, it's the longest hours you'll ever have to work. <laughs> like, the worst job. Yeah, <laughs> somehow so if you it's. Accept all that and know it's gonna happen. And it, yeah, it's gonna be miserable, but know you're gonna come out of it a better person or at least a different person. And I didn't know I was going to write about my, my journey, but it was so epic just meeting new people like amazing people and the stuff that i did i was like there's no way i can't write about it and at the time i was the only black person on the trail which was something that was pointed out to me not something that i actually knew um so i knew and then once i decided i didn't want my the way i approached the trail to change i didn't want to go okay i'm writing about it i need good things to happen no what I did was, and I, I learned this a long time ago, I can't remember what author, um, this is a quote from someone I followed, uh, they said, um, the way you can tell a good writer is when he his writing is so good that he can write about something mundane and it sounds amazing. And I knew that I was always a good storyteller, I love st um, sharing stories, and I knew in order for this book to be good, I need to make sure that these people are following me, but not following someone that they're reading about they need to experience it themselves because if they experience it then they're living it and then if they're living it then it it pops out more and they can relate a lot more and that was the thing about writing this is that i relived my through hike my through hike was six months i relived it for two years writing this book and then now doing my talks and sharing it with people i'm still reliving it like it was last week this was how many years now nine years yeah, 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 yeah. Eight, 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 nine years. Almost ten years, so yeah. it still feels like it was a couple <laughs> seasons ago. Yeah, that was my uh, my idea behind the uh, the documentary I will do um, later on. Is that like I watch all these documentaries on on YouTube, and I felt like it's like you know go hike and it's wonderful in the AT and all that stuff, and I'm just like. But that's not real. It sounds like a fantasy because the AT, let's be brutally honest, is a hard trail. You know, you're going to go through so many things, but that's what shapes you as a person when you come out. So it's like, I want for my documentary, the good, the bad, the ugly, I don't care what it is. I want it to be shown. I want people to be a part of my experience, even yes. the bad parts. People need to understand that that's part of the preparation, not just your gear. Because I had all the gear in the world, but if I didn't walk into this staying positive, I had this. I have the saying when I write in, in the registers uh, or whoever register is like, you know, 
a notebook and shelters or a hostel, whatever, where you can just write your day and let people know that are behind you, what's going on or whatever. And at the end, I would write uh, love, peace, and all that good stuff because I wanted to make sure that every time I wrote it, that, okay, it reminded me, this is why I'm here. When people would, when we were hiking Pennsylvania and people were hating it and in the registers, they were like, I hate this state, I hate this. No, I was like, look, I'm not, I'm not happy about this, this section of the trail, but I am on the Appalachian Trail and I'm living my dream. So I'm going to keep that positive. Love, peace, and all that good stuff, you know? And then people come up to me and they're like, I don't know how you stay so positive. I'm like, trust me, sometimes it's hard. But if I didn't approach it this way, then I'm going to end up being miserable throughout my entire hike and may not even finish it. So you have to be prepared mentally. I think that's the key to success on the Appalachian Trail is mentally prepare yourself. Yeah, there's other things physically and all that. But mentally, if you're not prepared, it ain't going to happen. I agree. Like, like testament. Uh, yeah, the the mind is it's a mind over matter kind of thing. Yep. It's a powerful thing. Because you can oh, you can go through that crucible and evolve emotionally, physically, and everything on trail if you have the right mindset. Um, you know, but you know if it's something you're not sure whether you want to do it, then definitely go see if you want to do it first. You know, but if you already yeah. know you want to do it. You can do it. Yeah. And, and, and also, uh, when you step out of that, like people ask me, well, I threw a hike again. My life is totally different than it was when I first threw a hike. Um, because I didn't have a home. I had sublet my apartment. I was living in Italy at the time, came back, had sold almost everything I owned. I was a minimalist, and I had some money saved up. That all changed now. My life, especially with this book out, now... You know, I'm doing talks. I'm a professional speaker now, and I have a responsibility now to like share my message. So I can't really drop everything and then go for another disappear for six months unless it's something that goes into uh, my work that I'm doing. If someone's sponsoring me and saying, "Hey, we want to sponsor you to do the PCT, share your story," then I'm 100% down with that. But the way I was before, I had nothing to lose. I had nowhere to go for six months. You know, I didn't even know where I was going to go after I finished through hiking. Uh, luckily, everything fell into place, and Voice of Reason's family gave me a place to stay so I could start writing. That's sweet. But, yeah, life is different now. So, yeah, it depends on what part of your, your life you're in. Now, you lived in uh, New York before you left, uh, before you left for Italy. So I was staying with, I lived. Oh, yeah, I lived in New York City. Lived yeah. New York City. And I lived in Queens, sublet at my apartment. Right. And then I lived in Italy for about a year, came back, stayed with friends, because I didn't want to take that away from the people that were sublet my apartment. Now, was the trail culture and the trail, um, trail magic and all that kind of stuff, was that extremely surprising to you, how good... The universe and just everyone seems to be when you're in the right place at the right time. There's a, a chapter in my book called A Suspicious Mind where I talk about I'm a New Yorker and anyone coming up to me approaching me trying to give me something, I'm checking for my yeah. wallet because they want something back. <laughs> and I go, I have stories in the book from my experience as a New Yorker, a young New Yorker, and going through that. So I walked into the AT, when I saw food on the ground, I was like, the people would leave food at, tr at trailheads and stuff, or coolers, I'm like, what is For you going to take. on here? Yeah. I didn't trust it at first, right. but then hunger took over, and I quickly realized what was happening, and trail magic didn't just come from people giving me food, but it was also giving me a ride into town so I can resupply, or through hikers that saw I needed more water, or a through hiker that helped me pitch my tent for the first time, showed me how to use my mini stove, all these things, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, because it took a while, I said, what is, what is going on here? Why are people like this? And it took this New York suspicious mind to get used to it, and then after a while, then it came where I was like, like I said earlier, I feel guilty taking this from people. So then I, I made it I made it good when I decided that I was going to continue sharing my story with people because I'm a storyteller. And if I remember hiking 
I came to Harper's Ferry. I was in a hurry because I just wanted to get there. And there was a, fa- a family of day hikers, and they said, hey, Derek, uh, they said, hey, are you a through hiker? And I was racing. I wanted to get to town, and I went, ah! and I stopped <laughs> and just talked to them for 20 minutes. Although I wanted to be in town, I had I had that gift to give them, and I had to do it. That's fun. I, I agree. Like, um, for, um, for myself, um, I'm trying to be bold and, and talk about my story so um, people, I guess, would feel connected to it. Like, um, back when I was, like, 20 years old, I was with somebody who, uh, who is a serial rapist, you know, mm-hmm. and I went through my fair share with that. And it took three days of just, like, fasting and praying to the Lord to rescue me, and I did get out of there. But that's part of the the moment when I decided to be to go do the Appalachian Trail so when people ask me why do you want to do it I say because I can but now it's like I also want to help people outside of the trail experience I will start with the documentary but also I want to do it in a very personal level I think that stuff like that needs to be talked about you know yeah you that that story you just told me you're going to inspire a lot of people because that situation you were in doesn't define you. You know what defined you? How you came out of it and what you're doing now. And when you share that story, people, and you don't even have to try to inspire people. Just share your story. It's like um, when I do my talks, I don't tell people I'm a black hiker. No. Obviously, you can see who I am. I share my story, and I, I have a story to share, so I have that passion, and, and people see that. So when you have a story to share, don't hesitate. Like my friend said, the same guy that would tell people when we we first met someone, we would meet someone, he's like, oh, he hiked the AT, this this and that. And I said, why do you do that? He said, look, I tell people I'm a writer. I tell people I do movies. Even if they're not listening, I tell them, even if it bores them, because eventually someone's going to hear you. Eventually someone's going to hear you. And now the dude is making movies he, he made a, he's got an Amazon Prime movie that's nominated. So, you know, this is what he did. And I took that and ran with it as well because I had a story and I have a voice now. I have a platform. People want to hear what I say now. And I, I have that responsibility. And so they always wanted to. <laughs> Pardon? They wanted to hear what you have to say. They just didn't have any way to hear you until you decided to share it. Exactly. So. Now... They wanted either me or someone like me to share a message like that. And now that I have this platform, I feel like I need to continue doing it to a higher level where I'm at. So what you're doing right now with your documentary, it may start off small, but I, I, I promise you, if you put your heart into it, everything you have, it's you're going to inspire people. I say, you know, if I inspire one person, obviously you want to inspire more than one. Right, yeah. You've done your, You've done your job. I agree, and, and that's what I'm hoping will happen, you know? It will. It will. I yeah. feel it. I sense yeah. it. <laughs> I, Mr. Fabulous says it will happen. <laughs> so it's okay. It's going to happen because you said it. <laughs> well, you gotta, first, you got to set your mind to something, and you're going to hike the, through hike the Appalachian Trail. So. Yeah, I'm going for a yo-yo. I told him that. So he can't change my mind. Because well. he's like, I don't know. You're going to miss home when you get up to Katana. I'm like, no, Matt Verla, I'm doing it. <laughs> you, wow. So how, As a how, rookie. Huh? As a rookie. I never how threw long, hike before. How long? Hmm? How long did you, did you say you did it or you going she, to do it? She wants to do it. Yeah. So how, so how long? Like, how long do you think it'll take you to get there and then come back and do it again? I'm thinking in total it'll be about either 10 to 12 months. Okay, so a year. Okay. That's a long time to be away, but honestly, yeah, I mean, have you through hikes or you've done sections? I've done little bits, little bits and pieces. I feel like it's unfair to say it's a section because, you know, I feel like section sounds a bit longer no, than... No, 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 no. <laughs> See, here's the thing. Here's One the thing night, I tell two. people. When they say, I just... Don't, get rid of the just. You're out there. You're doing it. You know, you, a section is a section. A section could be a foot. Mm. You know, like, <laughs> you're, you're doing... 
you're out there and you're doing it. You're doing more than what I did when I first started through hiking. So lose that mindset because I know you know you you've done more than you're saying, you, and what you're doing right now is gonna be grand. You do that yo-yo. That's I thought of doing a yo-yo, <laughs> but as a challenge to myself, doing it fast, so trying to get it done, you know, in like seven months or something like that. <laughs> which I don't know if it's possible, but you know. That sounds like a stretch. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a stretch. You can do but, it. Five <laughs> miles an hour, 12 hours a day. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yeah, I think I got it. You can, no, eat, I, you can eat steak I, every night if you eat meat. You can go into town. And <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I was a vegetarian when I grew like Now I'm a vegan, so that changes everything. Now, yeah. you know? But also, veganism is, is there's a lot more for, for us that um could help me along the way so i know i'm still gonna stick with vegan i won't i won't eat meat i do (laughs) i I, I don't know how you survive (laughs) well i mean i started off as a a pescetarian where i would eat fish and then eventually it just wasn't sitting well with me uh physically not just mentally i did i did there's two types of vegans there's vegans for self and vegans for the animals and I, I'm a, I was a vegan for self, mm-hmm. and then I started becoming a vegan for animals. But to be honest, I'm really vegan for self. So, <laughs> yeah. um, ain't nothing wrong with that. But yeah. you know, I was a vegetarian. I don't, I don't cry when I see someone eating meat. No. <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> I was a vegetarian until I, um, I was at a bonfire, and my redneck friend was serving up deer meat, and I was just like. I don't want to try it. And he's like, really, try this. I'm like, no. He keeps doing that over and over and over again. And I'm like, okay, fine. You know, just just for you to shut up, I'll try it. And I tried it, and I felt like the little rat in Ratatouille. Like, there were, like, fireworks going off. And I was like, oh, my God, this is the (laughs) best meat I ever had in my life. Yeah. I love meat (laughs) sense. Oh, no, no. That's the thing. Like, I don't ever preach to people to be a vegan, like, some people are meat eaters, some people are not. Some people are in the middle, some people are, you know, fish eaters. Like, this works for me. If I was, trust me, if I was craving bacon, then I'd be eating bacon, you know? But I, I don't crave any of that. I don't need it in my life. And I know how it, it would make me feel if I did eat it. So I'm okay. You know, my partner, she eats steak once in a while. I don't like her eating it around me because we ain't making out afterwards. But, you know, it's like, <laughs> It, it's her body. It's you know, it's what she wants to do. I can't. I can't control her. I'm not gonna I, lie. I, like, you know? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Steak breath is is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, I have a bad story about hanging out with someone one time, and I was a vegetarian at the time, and we were drinking, and she went out to a hot dog stand out in New York City, and we're like kind of tipsy, and then we started making out, and then a piece of the the hot dog got in my mouth and I was oh like, my oh, god. Oh, 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 oh. Ew. <laughs> so I have this thing where I can't be around if I'm dating someone, I can't be around her when she's eating meat. I don't mind if she eats it, but you're not we're not that's, you're not gonna get close to my face. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna think about if I was ever making out the guy who just ate hot dogs and be like, Oh, yep, that story okay, yeah, we're done. We're yep, done. Yep. Let's just stop. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, we'll see. I'd be trying to get to... more of the hot dog. <laughs> 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 You'd be French kissing that hot dog. Totally joking. <laughs> that is weird when you get food from a kiss. <laughs> so, uh, what advice would you give to a rookie like my, uh, me? And um, actually, the cameraman here is going to be a, a, a through hiking one day. So, okay. he's here to listen to. <laughs> oh, okay. My advice uh, to rookies would be, like I said earlier, first, find out if you like to hike. Go out there. Do a weekend hike. Do a week hike. Um, Wherever you are, just go out there. Wear a pad. Make sure it's something that if it's go out there when it's cold. You know, try to – I interviewed someone today, um, and she's still hiking for the first time, and what she's doing is she's wearing the gear – that she's going to be out there in in cold and so in cold weather, hot weather. She's trying to get a feel of it. So get a feel of what you think you may be getting into. Do some research. Read read some memoirs. Read the Unlikely Through Hiker. You 
you know, learn, learn through his mistakes, mm-hmm. uh, and watch talk. So I would say prepare, prepare mentally, prepare yourself, and know that you're going to walk into something that's going to be amazing and beautiful, but also prepare that it's going to be tough. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, actually, I got um, him to do a shakedown for me for my my through hike <laughs> last year. And I was kind of like, okay, I know my FRL said don't bring this stuff, but I'm going to bring it anyway. So my pack was 40 pounds. And it hurt my back so bad. And I hated everything that was in my pack. And I ended up going like, oh my God, he is right. I really won't be using these hammocks. I mean, when I'm exhausted, I'm just going to lay out the pad and go to sleep. It was impressive how spot on he was. It, I have this I have this thing that was told to me a long time ago, and you may have heard it, where if, when you, whenever you pack for vacation or to go somewhere, um, when you're done, take half of it out. Yeah. Because <laughs> you, know, you probably won't need it. It's kind of like that when you pack. It's like the stuff that I had in my backpack, a majority of it I probably could have gotten rid of. Like I had a, an outdoor shower that you could put. It was I don't know how many gallons it like maybe five know, gallons, three gallons yeah. you can add whatever and then i hung it up on a tree and then i would bathe out like shower myself outside that little nozzle i didn't need that. <laughs> I didn't need that i got rid of that you know so it's there's things that you think you may need but i promise you like a lot of that stuff that you think oh just in case there's not going to be a just in case like when people bring mace it's like mm, or or bear spray it's like Probably never gonna need that. Right. So. Except apparently you can use uh, bear spray as spices. I learned that on Bear Grylls. Pepper, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah you gotta be careful really with it. Carry that, like, yeah. You wanna really cut down their, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> when you're pulling that trigger, you aren't thinking that you're gonna ruin your dinner. <laughs> That's gonna be some spicy meatballs. Oh, you what? <laughs> Well, um... also one, one, one quick thing about that is when you're through hiking, you're burning a lot of calories, hundreds and hundreds of calories, if not thousands. Um, you're not thinking about, I mean, there's some people that do in the beginning, but I guarantee you, if you're through hiking for a while, you're hungry, you will eat whatever and however it tastes, you know, it's just going to be like there and you're just going to destroy it. I would eat cardboard if I, you know, if I could, if there's nothing else to eat as a through hiker. <laughs> but at the same time, there are always meals that you end up carrying for like three resupplies. And then you realize, wait, I eat everything except this. I will go hungry for the last 10 hours to get into town just so I don't have to eat this. So you leave that in a hiker box. Or I ended up, I was a vegetarian, but I had Spam, a packet of Spam in my, in my food bag. Because I was going to give it to another hiker. I never saw her. I carried it for like a month. And I was like, and then when I found that dog, I ended up giving it to the dog because he was lost in the woods. And I was like, all right, the dog is just eating or whatever. But yeah, I agree. Like, there's some stuff. Like, I got tired. That's a good question. What was one of the, the things that you had that you were eating a lot of that you were just tired of by the end of the trail? Oh, that's good. Oreos. <laughs> I ate a lot because... I, my family would send me a whole big pack of Oreos, and then you're not going to carry a whole bunch of Oreos. I mean, they go fast, but you make sure you eat a bunch of them while you're in town. So yeah. I'd, I'd sit there and eat Oreos like crazy, and then didn't really want them after a while. Mine was Pop-Tarts. Pop-tarts. After a while, I was yeah. like, okay, I'm done with these Pop-Tarts. <laughs> but I couldn't get enough of oatmeal. I love oatmeal in the morning. That yeah. was my thing. Yeah, People were getting tired of it, and I was like, I'll take it. I'll and I like ramen. I like. Really? Yeah. I, talk I'll about do ramen lot. three days a week. <laughs> like, uh, eat, for dinner, I put peanut butter in it and some hot sauce. Oh, tuna? it's so I good. Can't do it sardines. Yeah, tuna and sardines. <laughs> and the, I like, do it. Even when I hike now, it's it's hard for me to, to, to eat ramen again. Huh. <laughs> Have you tried it with the peanut butter? I have not. No. I love peanut butter too. It's like it's a pad work. thai. It's a it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah. spicy stuff and some peanut butter. The one thing I would do was um, Nutella 
with um what was it peanut butter and it was something else I mixed up. It's in the book. I can't remember. I wrote the book such a long time ago. But yeah, <laughs> when you're a hiker, you start mixing stuff up, and it's like okay, yeah, all right, a little bit of dirt, but I, I don't know. <laughs> no, I got it. Yep. That is yep. true. I I like drop tuna on on the on the dirt, and I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I just grabbed it and put it on the bread and <laughs> ate it anyways. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm too hungry, I'm too lazy to go to the bear bag, so screw it. <laughs> we've all done it as, as hikers, we've all done it. <laughs> Some of that duff doesn't taste too bad. <laughs> the dark stuff on top. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what inspired you to do the Appalachian Trail? I read uh, A Walk in the Woods. I'm a big reader. And I read A Walk in the Woods, and I knew about it through that. Didn't know much more than that. And um, it was just stuck in the back of my mind that I wanted to do this trail that Bill Bryson may sound so hard. So, But it was like a pipe dream, like wanting to travel the world or run a marathon or hike the Appalachian Trail. But luckily, everything fell into place. It popped into my head and decided to do it. Have you run a marathon? I still want to run a marathon. I actually was training to run a marathon before i did my through hike and let me know when you do i'll go with you okay okay it's still one of my my dreams so yeah yeah (laughs) that'd be fun that'd be great uh let's see um do you have any regrets for the trail i have two i have two regrets one is doing the quad state challenge wish i didn't do it because i heard maryland section was really pretty uh, and also, my biggest regret is I found a dog on the trail, and my biggest regret was giving the dog back to its owner because it was it was obvious that it was not a good home. So that's my biggest regret, and I think about that dog all the time to this day. So, in fact, that chapter, every time I would go over it to revise it or edit any of it, I would my, my eyes would well up. So that's one of my, my, my biggest regrets is uh, having to part ways with with that with that dog i i've done that once um with the i left uh, a dog that i used to take care of or whatever um porky i left him with the uh the owner and you know she was abusing the dogs it was obvious and i drove away you know i i know i know i know that was the thing i had to do but it wasn't the mm-hmm. right thing to do you know yeah and I felt yeah, and it was like the Porky was running after my car, and it just broke my heart. I was a wreck for an entire week. I'm still a wreck over it. Yeah, it's it it's hard. It was it, yeah. I think I now have a puppy, and she sometimes she's about the same size as the puppy, uh, the dog I found. Now uh, she'll get bigger, but um, she reminds me a, a little bit of her. So it's it's kind of a, a healing, but you know she's never gonna replace that that dog but it, again it was part of my story and um i wouldn't change my time with her just how i would probably go on about it but again i don't know because i there was no way i was going to be able to through hike with the dog because i was hitting a section of the at uh shenandoah where you can't have dogs right uh, yeah that the dog wasn't on the dog wasn't on a leash it, it wouldn't allow anyone to put him on a leash so there was no way i could walk with that dog I would have to go around and it would change. I wasn't prepared to through hike with a dog and I didn't really want to skip any, I wasn't a purist, but I just didn't want to skip that, what is it, like a hundred miles of, of the AT. So, you know, it was something I had to do, like you said, but still regret it. Well, um, what was the uh, best part of the, uh, of your hike? Best part is what came out of it. Um, which is something that, I was afraid when I finished through hiking that I would lose everything that I, I gained from it. And I was blessed that not only did I keep everything, that it changed It changed my life. It changed who I am, uh, my career. Um, it gave me a, a, a bigger responsibility, bigger than myself. Um, and now, uh, people, I don't have kids, but... Um, and that's a responsibility, like as a parent. But I feel now, um, as a parent of this book, I have a responsibility to uh, to share my experience and to 
I, you know, when I was a little kid, I didn't know anything about the Appalachian Trail. Now I want a little Derek to know about it. My, my book is kid-friendly, no curses, just made up words that sound like curses. Um, and also I'm, I'm writing, after I, I'm doing the audio book of my book uh, with Audible, but after that I'm going to work on a children's book, uh, maybe even a series, so I can get, continue getting the word out there and sharing my message. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I have to excuse myself for one minute. I'll be there. <laughs> you, you got a fart? Uh, yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to take a leak. <laughs> well, luckily I am, I uh, questioned that stuff earlier. So, um, yeah, it's just us, awesome, I guess. <laughs> um, we'll see. What kept you motivated on the trail? I think in the beginning it was the thrill. It was the challenge, and then it was really the love of what I was doing. I could have probably finished the AT in about less than five months. I finished it in almost six months. I was shy like two days because I wanted to continue this, the experience. So it wasn't hard for me to continue being inspired. Someone else asked me that question about writing, and it's kind of like when I talk also, when you have that passion it won't take much for you to, to be inspired to continue doing what you're doing. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, I actually have been having this screenplay in my head for the past like 10 years. And um, it was always like my envisionment of through hiking the Appalachian Trail, but in like in a creative way. So it's not literally me walking in the forest, but like a story, a, like a fairy tale if you will set up around that idea and I never had the courage to write it so I'm hoping that on the trail at some point I'm gonna have that courage to finally write it um I get that because as a writer um, this was the first story that I wanted to share with people I've written a bunch of stuff before I have several manuscripts uh, poems um, and just short stories that I've written and felt that they were good, but they were just really for me. Uh, this was the first time that I knew from the first word that I typed that this was going to get published. I didn't know how it was going to happen, but I knew this was going to get published and my story was going to be shared um, and my voice, my voice was going to be heard. So, you know, like you, you you're out there, you're going to do it. Sometimes you don't know how it's going to happen, but it's 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 going to happen, especially if you have a message, a story, um, that passion to share uh, something with people. Something yeah. that's great. That's actually incredibly helpful because, like, uh, you know, as a writer, you kind of beat yourself up over the fact that you can't start it whatsoever. Like, you know the story, but you can't start it. And so, you know, you're constantly kicking yourself for it, but... I agree. There's, uh, I imagine that there is that magic moment where it just flows, you know? Yes. I, I learned another blessing I got from this through hike was my writing changed because I went from like that, like, what am I going to write about? And having that, you know, I don't know how to go about this to now. Maybe it's cause I, I'm getting older and I have these stories, but with my writing, with my talks, I don't lack, I don't lack any words. I don't lack any, any story to share. I have a story for everything, not just through hiking, but other things in my life. I don't lack any of that. And I, I'm a big believer as, as you get older, you do get wise when you have stories. I'm that dude that can sit down and listen to an old guy tell his old stories. I'm that guy. And I always said that I want to end up being an old, that old guy that can share those stories. In order to share those stories, I need to have those experiences. I've always been a good storyteller. Even when I was younger, when I was a kid, where I would, like, talk myself out of, like, trouble. You know, like, I yeah. was really good at convincing people things. So instead of using my powers for evil, I said, look, I can convince people. I can I can get people to listen to me. I can lie. I talk about it in a book where I, would, I made up this story, and people knew it was a story, but they were still, like, listening to every <laughs> bit of what I was saying. Uh, and I realized that was a gift and that I can take that and structure that into something that could be really good and useful for others. 
Yeah, I, I can see that. And, you know, like, I noticed what, what I like is listening to other people's stories, taking it in. And I also noticed I'm very good at getting people to talk. And, um, and I noticed that with the, you know, the rapist, like, he ended up telling me everything that he did to all these victims vividly. And I thought to myself, if I can get that guy to talk, I can get anybody to talk. In a, but I want to use it for good, not for evil. You yes, know? yes. And that's uh, a great gift to have, especially if you're doing a documentary. I agree. And yeah. And it's good that you know that. It's good that you know that. And um, sometimes it works amazingly. And there's other times where you're like, man, I wish, you know, I wish I would have listened better or when with me I wish I would have said this instead um, but again the more you do it it's like it's it's a craft I agree. so as, as long as you keep doing it practicing it it'll get better and better and better I'm a better writer now than I was before I threw hyped before I worked on this book I'm a better writer now than I was when I finished that book because I've done a bunch of other stuff like articles and all that so um, you you find, again, I keep going back to voice. You find your voice of reason. You find your voice. <laughs> and once you do that, that's it. No one can stop you. I agree. Uh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited for what's in the future, you know. I'm excited for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, then, uh, how did it feel when you reached Katahdin? Um, There was a documentary being filmed the the year that I did it. So if you want to see my reaction, it's in the documentary. <laughs> um, flip flop flipping. And I use I reached out to the director and um, the filmmaker and I said, can I use these clips for my some of my stories and stuff? And every time I see it, I'm reliving it. And also, when I wrote my book, I wanted to relive every moment. That's why as soon as I got off the trail, I started writing it. And the first draft was just off the top of my head because it was so fresh. And then the rest, I had a journal and photos and stuff I used to kind of like fill in the holes. Um, so I relived it. What you In the book, that last chapter, um, I poured everything into it. Just like the chapter with magic, I poured everything into it. And readers are readers reach out to me and say that those two chapters are the strongest for me. But there's also other ones that I try to make it a light book, funny, hilarious book. Um, kind of like a walk in the woods. Um, and when I finished, it was, I remember telling myself, don't cry because they're filming this. Do not cry. You got to stay fabulous. Cause you know, when you, you could cry and have an ugly cry, you know, <laughs> I didn't want that to happen. And I remember, I, I just felt it. I just felt like, because I kept getting false summits, and I kept going, oh, this is it. No, this is it. <laughs> and, but the, the end of it is really flat, because you see it from a distance. And I go, oh, there it is, there it is. And then I, I couldn't hold it back, and I had to turn around, and because I knew everyone was looking at me. Everyone separated, left the, um, the, the, the sign, they left it or like, this is all his. Everyone gave me my moment, moment and I'm getting the chills just thinking about it right now. And I let that ugly cry, I let it out, and then I just kept, I kept going, and I remember just looking at it and saying, this is it, this is, I, I've been looking for you. And I just put my head on it and just, just started crying, and they captured it, and I was like, damn you! But then I also <laughs> kept thinking, like, they're filming me, and I need to compose myself because he continued. He started asking me questions when I was sitting on it, uh, on the on the sign. Because you know when you finish, through hikers wanted like a great summit photos, and I ran that through my head a bunch of times. And what ended up happening happening was I sat on it, just raised my arms, and was just kind of embracing it all. And Shanti, uh, another through hiker, just captured that photo and. Um, see it well, you can't see because of the glare but it ended up being an epic photo um and every time i see that photo it just reminds me of, of what i was feeling and all those emotions those mixed emotions wow <laughs> i do like that photo um i don't know if that's specifically that photo but i mean you doing that the raising yeah. your arms and stuff yeah, that that's an epic photo being, that ended thank you that ended up being in the uh, atc magazine that 
next season. Um, and it, it, it does pop out. Uh, it, I love those where I've seen a bunch of different ones where you can see people are posing for them, but there's others where you can see the emotions in their, in their pose and what they're doing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad it ended up being something that I can look back and, okay, those feelings are coming back to me again. For me, it was halfway, and it was pretty damn exciting, and my mom and my aunt came, and uh, it was... Where, where was it? Where, where was it? In Mount Katahdin. Oh, so for... Because I, I flip-flopped. Oh, it was your half... No, but I... My question really was, um, where was your... So you... Okay, so Springer was your... your my your okay. end point, right, right. But uh, Katahdin is pretty magnificent. And there's false you, summits. And the you same, were up there with me, Yeah, you? the same day as you. My mom yeah, and my... I mean, that time, I, I, I remember talking to your family that time. Because yeah. you guys were chilling for a while. Yeah, and you Squash... I was up there. Squash was doing the... Yeah. 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 <laughs> I have, yeah, I have pictures of you and my mom and my aunt. And, yeah. Do you really? Yeah. I have to, I, I have to send you pictures. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty I love good. It. I love when like other hikers send me photos that I didn't even know was out there. Yeah, I probably so have I some. A photo of me in Magic, um, where it was right before the guy came and picked up uh, Magic, and I'm just leaning like this, kind of like upset, and he captured it. The guy was sitting just like a little bit off, and just he's like, I just saw you and just took it, and he sent it to me. And to this day, it's one of my favorite photos. That's awesome. <laughs> So, um, are you going to Thurek again? Are we going to see you out there in the woods? <laughs> You're going to hear a lot about me. You will see a lot of me. I'm going to continue writing, traveling, and writing about it. I'm going to be like a travel writer, an adventure writer, an outdoor writer. Um, and I've been write, doing articles, and I've, I've been staying busy. As far as through hiking, it needs to be right. Shanti and I... She was the, the hiker that I hiked together. We hiked together the second half of my through hike. And we play around with, with the idea of through hiking next year, 2022, because it would be our, our 10 year anniversary of through hiking the AT. So we're thinking of doing a PCT. Hmm. But realistically, I don't see that unless I get approached by a company and they say, hey, we want to we wanna sponsor this hike because we know you got a story to share. It, there is a female hiker now out there that's getting sponsored by ATC and a bunch of other organizations. And she's going to write about it uh, afterwards. She's doing a blog and writing about it. So um, that would probably be the only way I do it. But who knows? I, that whole Triple Crown title, I'm amazed by. Every oh. time I see Testament, it's just the first thing that pops in my head. And I know that's not something you want to be like. You're my, you're my good friend, but you're more than that. But it, still, that's kind of like it's called a triple crown like it's like wearing a crown it's always gonna be there and i always imagine if i do another through hike i might as well just do the other one and be a triple crowner that's how i felt yeah yeah so that's that's another thing is i'm just gonna go ahead and, and do the other one uh the jim murray the secret shelter do you remember the secret shelter it was um uh, Unionville, New York, or something like that. It's a checkered floor, a black and white checkered floor in like an old barn. He he let us stay in an old barn that year. He went to go do the CDT, and he had just built this uh, secret shelter for us. And he was getting his triple crown, and he left a map up in the secret shelter and said. These ponies take care of themselves, so I left them for six months, and I'm going to do the CDT. And he had pictures, he had maps of the, the PCT and the AT on the wall as well, and it was my first time hearing about it. It was the first time I realized there were other long trails, and it was kind of the day I realized I was going to hike another long trail after this one. Because you did it back to back, right? Back to uh, back to back. Two years. I did two oh. years and then three years in between the second and third. So. I was broke after I threw high, so I couldn't do another. <laughs> I'm just like, I got no money. I don't got a home. I got uh, nowhere to go. I'm gonna write about this, make some money. So that 
<laughs> that was part of it. Uh, it gave me a reason to go back to work, to have a second trail. You know, I, I knew there was going to be some depression. Uh, mm. you know. I think if I didn't write about the AT, I probably would have done the other trails as yeah. well, right away. Like, right. I would have got a job, worked, and then, because, again, I had nowhere else to go. But since it was drilled in my brain that I was going to write about it, then my, my life changed. Mm. It was totally different, so... <laughs> yeah, stuff happens. Yeah, but it was good. It yep. was the best thing that could have happened. Um, I was gonna say, what does that number have to be for someone to offer for you to go hike? <laughs> uh, not high, actually, not not high at all. Just not, paying for all your stuff. Paying, pay, just paying for um, you know, transportation there, um, food, food and, and maybe yeah. extra cash to like you know, not a lot. Not yeah. a lot. I'm not asking. Just some, just paying for it. No, because I can easily get, not easy, but I can get sponsors for the gear. Sponsor, so all the gear I can get sponsored, and I pretty much have all the gear. Just some stuff. Well, just I in case someone's it. watching uh, whenever this gets edited, what's that number? Just name a number. <laughs> name that number oh, no. so someone like, can match it. <laughs> no, $5,000. Out of, out of no, no, 12, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I guess. Well, it couldn't be five because it wouldn't cover all. No, that wouldn't cover it. Yeah, you're right. So, let's just say ten to twelve thousand. But you know, I'm easy. Twelve to twenty-five, <laughs> right? <laughs> twelve times two. Yeah. <laughs> twelve will get you thinking. Twenty-five, your soul. Right. Right. right, right, right. <laughs> also, what would sweeten the deal is that if it's something is expected afterwards is that if someone if they are sponsoring me obviously they're sponsoring me for a reason right. so i would want to make the best of it let's film some of it why don't we do like a short documentary of it let's vlog it let's all the things so if we're going to do this send people out there with me as well you right. know so we can do this um it doesn't need to feel, i don't need my money my pockets filled with money just no you need testament to go with you so that i testament can you know testify <laughs> oh. i mean honestly yeah i mean it's there wanting to through hike is always going to be a part of my life to through hike it again which is i guess a good thing kind of like when when others dream of through hiking when they're younger, you know, it's something to thrive for. So it's it's always there. I think more so before um, I through hike because when I before I through hike, I didn't I didn't think that I was going to through hike. It was just like a pipe dream. But now I know about it. Now it's like I wouldn't mind doing it again. So it's more realistic for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, do you mind? Both of you guys, can you guys send me? Um, a picture that you would like as your thumbnail for uh, YouTube. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You need a bio or anything, or? Uh, yeah, that'd be nice too. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want your bio. <laughs> <laughs> I want your bio. I want your story out. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for this interview. <laughs> This was great. When you said Testament was going to be there, I was like, oh, I definitely got to be great, man. That's my brother, man. I just um, thought to myself, I'm like, why not? He literally lives, like, right over there, you know? <laughs> it's not far. And, and Testament, if you ever want to do, if you're doing your adventures or whatever, I'm planning to stay here, and mm -hmm. we're, we're going to have more than enough space. You can stay with us as long as you want. Whatever Sweet. you want to do, just reach out to me. You know, like don't be shy. I know you got the adventurous heart, but yeah. you're also working on other stuff. But remember, man. Well, I think south. I think I need to come south at some point. And uh, Noki is in Tennessee, and the honeymoon hikers are in Tennessee. The honeymoon hikers? No, they're, they're not. No, honeymoon hikers are here in All right, North Carolina. North Carolina, yeah, right? Because I because. Uh, they came over and did a live with me, and it was another time where I was doing some work in my workshop, and they just showed up. Oh, nice. So they, they're, they're close. Um, well, it might make sense for me to Have you ever, you ever come meet uh, Solo? Uh, solo. Well, I, I think solo I met him. Jennifer Far Davis is here. Like she, she came over a couple times. She's mm -hmm. amazing. Okay. Um, and she, again, she's the reason why I moved here. So. Yeah. Um, this is a hiking community right here. So. And she was a speed hiker 
record setter. She was the fast at one at one point she was the fastest woman, fastest person to hike the Appalachian right, right. Trail. She has several books out of Becoming Odessa. Um, I got a couple other ones. She's gonna kill me if I forget it. But um, she is. <laughs> if you Google, if you Google hikers like famous hikers, mm-hmm. she'll be like top three, right. top five, the most. You know, um, she's up there. So she's. She, she, I look up to her. She started the way I did, where she hiked it as a female, was the only one. Not a lot of females were out there. And then when she finished, she started writing her manuscript and started talking. And once people heard that, heard her, vo- heard her voice and then heard that she was writing about it, she got published and then everything went from there. So I'm kind of following her steps. Nice. So. Well... Good talk. Yeah, yeah, very exciting. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the interviews and everything. Thanks for having yeah. me. This was this was amazing. It was good to chat to both of you guys. Testament, you know how much I love you. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> 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 Post it on the documentary and all that. You know, if you have any questions, I'm sure Testament has all the answers for you, but whatever like you know i'm, I'm here to support yeah, man. okay thank you. thank you so much <laughs> all right guys i love you good to see you see ya, see ya. <laughs>